Yeah, this is the right one. It wasn't locked right though. No. I know. Yeah. Okay, here we go right here. All right. I find it easier to pull that ribbon yeah. slightly off the one side. Like okay. Right it makes it easier to open. Yes. Thank you so much. Because I would have been reading the wrong thing. Get out, boy. Everyone, if we could all please say good Easter morning to all of our people in their home churches and be quiet, begin to quiet so we can prepare to welcome this extraordinary day for all of us. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Thanks be to God.
Christ is our light, and as we light this candle here and in our home churches, we remember that that light casts aside all darkness and shadows. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to all of you in your home churches. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. The one who died has been raised. He is our promise and our hope. He is our hope that all that appears to die at the hands of evil will rise gloriously. Throughout Lent, we have believed that it is possible for our own hearts and our world to be restored, to be healed. And so let us be mindful of those whose hearts continue to be broken and a world that in so many places is broken. So my sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins so we can prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you taught us that the reign of God is in our midst. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have Jesus. mercy. Christ Jesus, you came proclaiming liberty to captives and good news to the poor. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you lived and died as God made human, and you rose that humans could be like God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. 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 And with Easter joy, let us sing of God's glory. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. Thus, Joseph, also named by the apostles Barnabas, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite and Cypriot by birth, sold a piece of property that he owned and brought the money and put it at the feet of the apostles. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not, hey, sweetheart, he said, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified, he has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Yes, there is a homily. <clears throat> yeah, uh, here it is. I have read this account of the resurrection from Mark's gospel 
probably innumerable times over all these years. As I read it this year, I became keenly aware that still, I've only touched the surface of what is really there, waiting for me. I've scratched it again this year, and I'd like to share with you this morning what I have found, or I think I have found, hoping that in some way it might be helpful or useful to you this morning. We just listened to a reading from the Acts of the Apostles and also from the letter to the Colossians. And we have become aware that there are possibilities in this world in which we live. But so often, as Paul intimates in his letter today, it seems to me that God is seeking to counteract humanity's abandonment of seeking the possible and accomplishing what is possible. And all of this changes, I believe, in our gospel this morning. If you didn't pick it up, there is something incredibly unusual in Mark's gospel this morning. And it relates directly to the possibilities that God saw when God created the universe. So just for a moment, let's revisit that text. But this time, let's pay particular attention to a particular spot. It said, on entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. These three women's amazement is really a hallmark of Mark's gospel. In Mark's gospel, almost any time Jesus does or says something, Mark tells us that the people who witness that moment are amazed. In the gospel passage, the women experience that same amazement seen throughout Mark's gospel. Now, something utterly new is introduced in this gospel. The young man tells these women who are amazed not to be amazed. We can't let this stark reversal go by us unattended. So what are we to make of it? What are we to take away this morning from it? To say one is amazed is ultimately to say that what one has seen or heard at one end of the spectrum is unexpected, while at the other end of the spectrum, seemingly impossible. The young, woman, the young man tells these three women, and Mark wants each one of us here and in our home churches this morning to clearly hear for the followers of the risen Jesus, being amazed must end. Why? Because God is inviting us to expect these things we traditionally have been amazed by. So, where we traditionally are amazed at Jesus' words about the infinite nature of love, we now expect it. And where we were amazed at Jesus' words about who God is and who we are, now we expect it. Where we are amazed at Jesus' acts of compassion that heal the human spirit, now we expect it. Where we are amazed at Jesus' words and actions relieving the oppression weighing upon the human heart, now, we expect it. Where we are amazed at Jesus' encounter with evil, 
ultimately in his suffering and death, which we honored this week, and its undoing of evil's power and evil's ability to paralyze us with fear, we now expect it. Where we are amazed at Jesus' proclamation of the kingdom of God, now present, now you and I expect it. In Jesus' now non-amazing rising, we can believe we can be and are transformed by him such that we can expect that what we thought was not possible is in, him, in and through him possible. And it goes on without limit. For now we believe we can, as taught by our very wise rabbi, do and be what he says we can do and be. On this Easter day, the young man of our gospel is telling all of us to reclaim all possibilities imprinted within creation and especially and uniquely in those created in the image of God, us. The resurrection of Jesus is, in fact, the resurrection of the ancient and eternal possibilities. Easy to say, not so easy to do. So I would like this morning to affirm this for all of us again this year as we did last year. A litany of the person written by what's traditional, anonymously, a Trappist monk. And I do so with all of us this morning with the hope that none of us will be remotely amazed at what is said about us as we respond to each of these titles God would have me call you by. And to each of these titles, I will declare that you are, I will say, I will sing, this is who you are. And not being amazed but expecting it, I invite you to sing back loudly to one another and in God's presence. This is who I am. Image of God. This is who you are. Born of God's breath. This is who you are. Vessel of divine love. This is who you are. The very dwelling of God. This is who you are. Chosen by God. This is who you are. Abiding in the sun. This is who you are. Temple of the Holy Spirit. This is who you are. Heir of the kingdom of God. This is who you are. The very glory of God. This is who you are. That's what you expected, right? Good. So bring 
this homily to an end, a very special little poem called Spring Song by a wonderful African-American poet, Lucille Clifton. See if it doesn't ring true to what scripture brings to us today and what I have hopefully brought to your attention. Miss Clifton says, the green of Jesus is breaking the ground and the sweet smell of delicious Jesus is opening the house and the dance of Jesus music has hold of the air and the world is turning in the body of Jesus and the future is possible. All this became true in the moment of our baptism when everything became possible for us and for God. And so let us respond to Skip as he chants the litany of the saints asking them to assist us to be as faithful to this baptism we will renew this morning as each of them has been. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Saints Mary and Joseph. Saints Peter and Paul, Saints James and John, Saints Simon and Jude, Saints Philip and Andrew, Matthew, Mark and Luke, O oh Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Archangel Michael, Gabriel and Raphael, Holy Guardian Angels, Sarah and Abraham, Rebecca and Isaac, Jacob, Leah and Rachel, Moses and Miriam, Aaron and Joshua, Ruth and Esther, David and Solomon, all judges and kings, patriarchs and prophets. Marching in, marching in, when the saints go marching in. Oh Lord, I want to be in that number. Yes, when the saints go marching in. Saints Patrick and Bridget. Martin Luther and Bellarmine, 
St. Vincent de Paul, St. Thomas More, St. Joan of Arc, Ignatius Loyola, St. Francis Xavier, I want to be in that number. Yes, when the saints go marching, and Elizabeth Seaton, Saint Isaac Jokes, Kateri Tekawitha, Mother Cabrini, Saint Rose of Lima. Martin the Forest, oh Lord, I, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching. Oh, when the saints, yes, yes, go marching. In. Oh. oh, oh. Sojourner of Truth, Damien the Leper, St. Edith Stein, Pope John the Twenty-Third, Mother Teresa, Mother Mary Lyne, Sister Thea Bowman, Oscar Romero, Gandhi and Martin, Victims of injustice and victims of terror, all victims in Ukraine, children martyrs in Gaza. Oh Lord, I want to be in that number. Yes, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the Yes, when the saints go marching in, oh, go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints Go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching. See what's possible. So my sisters, brothers, my family, we now stand before this font of baptism, which we asked God to bless last night. So let us all now recall that prayer that was spoken over this water at our vigil, where we humbly asked our God to bless this water that God created which will be sprinkled upon us this morning as a memorial of our own baptism. May God graciously renew each and every one of us that we may remain faithful to the spirit whom we have received. My sisters and brother, we ask the Lord our God to graciously bless this water. For God created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. We recalled how God made water the instrument of mercy. For through water, God freed God's people from slavery 
and quench their thirst in the desert. For through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant of God that he was entering upon with us the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan River, God has renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. We ask that this water be for us a memorial of the baptism each one of us have received, and to grant that we may share in the gladness of our sisters and brothers who last night received their baptism. May this be so for each of us this Easter morning, through Christ our Lord, to which we all say, Amen. Amen. And let us please light our candles. And as yours are lit, if you could please pass on to the people behind you and next to you. We have spent this Lent listening to the powerful word of God, seeking to understand God's deepest desires for us and for all who cry out to God for justice. And we have prayed for the discernment necessary to pursue wholeheartedly the light that is God's presence. We have longed for tikkun olam, the repairing of what is broken in us and therefore broken in our world. Let us truly moved in spirit, now humbly renew the promises of our baptism. And so I ask all of us to now renounce all the powers of darkness and death as I ask. Do you renounce sin? so as to live in the freedom of God's children. I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. I do. do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. I do. And now, hold your candles high. Embrace the powers of light and life do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of our sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. I do. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by God's grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life, to which we all say, Amen. Amen. And now, 
as this water comes upon each one of us, let us pause and be mindful of the new life that this Christ gives to us. And since the light now shines from within you, please extinguish your candles and let us all offer a humble, compassionate prayer filled with expectation for our sisters and brothers for whom we now pray. As we pray to be a people of Tikkun Olam who strive to heal 
the brokenness of the world. We know that yet there are many areas of brokenness. Jesus' death and resurrection healed and repaired. May this Easter season inspire us to do our part to repair and heal brokenness in our prayers and our actions. Our response to the petitions will be, Holy One, hear us. Holy One, hear us. For world leaders, both political and religious, that they be given the insight to discover the brokenness within their own jurisdictions and within their neighbors, and may have the courage to take action towards repairing those ruptures, we pray. Holy One, hear us. For Pope Francis and the other leaders of the Catholic Church, that the synodal process will alert them and motivate them toward healing the fractures within the church and between the leadership and the people, we pray. Holy One, hear us. For countries and groups of people damaged by disasters, both natural and human-made, for relief from their suffering, for aid in their rebuilding, we pray. Holy One, hear us. For all those who are impacted and have suffered through the destruction of the key bridge, with the hope that rebuilding and healing will move forward in a compassionate and timely manner, we pray. Holy, Holy One, one hear, hear us. For all those who suffer homelessness and addiction and illness of body and mind, for all those whose lives are in need of repair, we pray. Holy, Holy One, one hear, hear us. Sisters and brothers, for what else and whom else shall we pray? At the conclusion of our prayers, we will respond, Holy One, hear us. For the homeless woman who came among us, who despite her difficulties came in our presence, seeking as we do to be in the presence of the living God. For Mary, who was about to begin dialysis. For these prayers that we speak aloud, for the prayers that those in their home churches have written in the chat, for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Holy, Holy One, One, hear, hear us. us. So God, we have heard well the angel's voice, and so at the end of our prayers, we simply say, we are not amazed, but we expect these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
inside the world. We shall live in love.
Rise and pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands through the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and for all God's church. Exultant with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer this sacrifice by which we, your church, are wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. And of all the things to be grateful for, let's simply be grateful for the wonder and splendor of this wondrous day. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of this body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, remembering this morning the murdered, Chris and Michael, Welcome all of them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, <clears throat> through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now to the one who has made all of this possible for us, we call out, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. With the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And that peace of the risen Christ be with you. And with your spirit. And now offer that precious gift to one another.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. blood of Christ. Yeah, the blood of Christ. Amen. Drink of it. 
Let us pray.
Look upon us, your church, O oh God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed this morning by the Paschal Mysteries, we may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. couple of announcements. First of all, I want to thank each of the liturgy planners for uh, our triduum. They did extraordinary uh, work to prepare for us. A special thank you to Colleen and to Bridget um, for their absolutely tireless work this week. To parishioners who volunteered in so many different ways, to Sherry and Kat and our wonderful choir for the mystery of music that is for us to hear and draw us into, and to all of you who are gathered here in, in your home churches. Please take your candles home with you, and throughout the Easter season, light them every once in a while, just to be reminded of who you really are. The holy card on the back, it says, set your gaze on the east and witnessing the rising and know you have become an Easter, somebody who's always looking for the new possibilities that are always on the horizon. And lastly, from my part, uh, the Easter Bunny left Cadbury eggs for all of you. Oh, and for those who are familiar, uh, there is some... Uh, Refreshments from um, Panera in the back on the right. Hello, I'm Colleen, uh, the pastoral associate for those who are visitors. And for those who are visitors, whether you are visiting us here in church, whether you are joining us from your home churches, alleluia, he is risen. We are so happy that you are with us. It is wonderful that you joined us on Easter Sunday to worship. Um, we have an announcement from Miss Ann Gibson. You coming this way, uh, or am I bringing that to you? I'll bring it to you. Um, and I think that is all the announcements, yeah. Thank you. And don't leave before you get the Cadbury egg. Good morning, everyone. Or maybe I should say, good afternoon. Um, <laughs> Today, we will have a very special visitor join us. Uh, he or she, I'm not sure, will, uh, will be here after uh, the last song. So when he uh, or she arrives, uh, make sure you give them a nice, warm St. Vincent welcome. And he's very tired because he's been delivering eggs all night. And, but he said he would give us about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, if you forgot your, uh, and after the Easter Bunny goes home, uh, we will have an Easter egg hunt. Don't worry if you forgot your Easter basket. I have some bags for you to put your eggs in. And the first thing you're gonna do is go down to the classroom where Miss Peggy Meyer, wave, yes, is going to teach you a really cool song while my other helpers hide the eggs. And then when the eggs are hidden, I'll come and get you, and you can come up and start the Easter egg hunt. You may keep the eggs that you find because we have lots of eggs. Uh, after you found your eggs, you can go to the back to the gathering space where you will receive a bunny bag. A bunny bag, yes. Um, so that's how things will go after mass. Any questions? No questions, thank you. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.
Okay. Okay, everybody, could you could you take a seat for a minute? Could you take a seat for a minute? This is what we're going to do. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Peter Cottontail. Can I call you Peter? Oh, thank you. Okay, I want you to get in a line over here. It, and then you're going to come up and visit with the Easter Bunny, a photo op for mom and dad. And this is the Easter Bunny's helper. And she's going to keep the line moving so everybody will get a chance to say hi and get a picture. Okay? All right. We'll start with Kat and Benny. Get in the line. The bunny will the bunny won't leave till everyone had a chance to say hi. How cute is that? All right, come on, girls. Get closer. He doesn't bite. Hell, get you want to get on that side? Okay. Thank you. Smile, smile, bunny. All right. You're welcome. All right. Our Layla and company. Oh, we have two Laylas, don't we? This Layla and that Layla. Okay, come on. Oh. All right, come on, Oliver. Smile, Oliver. <laughs> All right, Layla, Leah, and the zero. Oh, how cute is that? Right. Who's next? Allison and Brooke? Yes. Oh, 
run, 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 Alec. Run so fast. Right. Smile, James. Look at mom. All right. And what's your name? Miss Marguerite wants a picture with the bunny. Miss Marguerite, does someone is someone taking a picture? Oh, and dads. Oh, yeah. Okay. And she'll take your picture. Oh, well, well there. While the bunny is finishing up uh, um, his visits, I forgot to make an important announcement. Thanks. Okay. Layla. The other, did you get your picture? Uh, is did anyone else? Gabby, you want a picture with the bunny? No? Okay. Um, oh. Here, my turn. <laughs> Send that to me. Okay. Um, I forgot to make a very important announcement. Uh, there were two winners for the uh, guest the jelly bean contest, and they are Max. Is he still here? Went okay. Well, he followed directions. And Tylana. Did I get that right? Tylana, is, am I saying that correctly? Tylana? Tylana was one of the winners of the jelly bean contest. I forgot to announce it, so she, was she guessed closest? Well, she gets a prize. Hi, uh, did you get a picture? Oh, okay. Hey, and who's this? What is it? Joey wants to see the bunny. Sure, anybody. <laughs> Okay, and all right, this is the last call because the bunny's very tired. He has to go home. Miss Andy, you want a picture with the Easter bunny? Come on. You're, oh, I'm sorry. You're a kid at heart. Sure. Here's, oh dear. Oh, okay. I, I can't enjoy it now, but maybe, oh. Oh. Anyone else? Last call. Huh? Yes. To get her prize. Oh, okay. Yes, I am down in the okay. All right. I'll send her. All the children should be in the classroom with Miss Peggy Meyer learning a song, so we can hide the eggs. I'm telling you, this is adding years. Okay. Do you have my phone number? Okay, yeah, I uh, should be in it. And where it comes to where I'll send it to Colleen to send it. Okay. <laughs>